Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and I'm doing another new movie review this week. It's called Hot Tub Time Machine 2. It's a sequel to the original 2010 raunchy comedy about four guys who wants up spending their miserable times in their lives decided to hang out in a hot tub, basically just having fun while drinking and, and doing all these crazy stuff inside a hot tub only to not realize that this hub tub was actually a built-in time machine that takes them all the way back to 1986 yep the 80s which this was at the time when they were teenagers and they were already having some hard times as well until they suddenly decided to fix everything that's done right you know basically just giving themselves a second chance well, this supposedly um, sequel to the first movie doesn't have anything that this movie really is supposed to have because this is more like a cash-in sequel that fills nothing but random crap that they put in, like so much pop culture and all this other stuff involving, you know, the characters actually having their own fame and, and fortune and, and are actually having basically the best time of their lives which suddenly <laughs> they want to feel very miserable once again which I really don't understand but I guess that's what this sequel had to be all about I mean later on but we're gonna get to that um, the movie stars Craig Robinson from The Office Clark Duke from from that one TV show that he did on CBS uh, with John Ritter and Billy Bob Fortin called Hearts of Fire. Yeah, he later went on to do the film Sex Drive and the original Hut of Time Machine. Yeah. Rob Caldry uh, from the TV show Children's Hospital, and, and he was also in the original too, as well. Adam Scott from Parks and Recreation, Chevy Chase, Carlette Wolf, Julian Jacobs, Christine Bentley, Christian Slater, Kelly Stewart, Bianca Haas, Jason D. Jones. It's written by Josh Heald, who wrote the screenplay for the original film, and it's directed by Steve Pink. The same director that did the original film, along with Accepted, and most recently, the remake of About Last Night. The movie began set five years ago. Lou Dorchin, Nick Reber, and Jacob, all played by Robert Coltry, Craig Robinson, and Clark Dude, had led the best times of their lives through fame and fortune, but suddenly had been struggling through their self-esteem, and their miserable time. Lou actually started bragging his success through time travel from his employee Brad after he was talking his true story life after uh, 2010 when he now becomes a lead singer in a heavy metal rock band only now that he lives in his own house with his wife who happens to be the mother of of Jacob. Well, while Nick Weber is basically spending his whole time in his musical career, as he's starting to do all these songs that, that seem to be parodies of, of many artists, you know, during the, the 80s and 90s, in that sort of way, or even the 2000s. Yeah, they, in fact, they even did uh, a music video called You Stay by Lisa Loeb. And which I know Lisa Loeb actually made a cameo appearance in the movie, so <laughs> that was interesting. Nick's wife, Courtney, however, started complaining about Nick's musical career, you know, having to go through Grammys after Grammys after Grammys after Grammys and do whatever he wants. While Jacob, of course, um, started feeling very left out, started hating uh, Lou even more, mostly because of the fact that he wants to become his father after having sex with his mother in the first movie and, and also the fact that now he's being 
being uh, chosen to become his butler once Lou hosts his own party at his place would, in, would invite a guest around. Also the fact that Lou now works um, with his success through time travel by his employee Brad inside uh, Lugo, which is a parody of Google building. And he was trying to talk about what it would be like if, if they can actually team up and be able to create the time travel. But of course he refuses because he was being an asshole and, and a dick. I mean he even offered one of one of the other employees to actually look inside the window to actually show a guy uh, showing off his dick and, and balls. And uh, yes this movie had tons of that jokes throughout the entire movie. Nothing but dicks and balls jokes. Lots of sex jokes that they put all the way around. Yeah, it's really lame the way they did this. So once Lou hosted the party, you know, he actually declined the offer to his old schoolmate named Gary Winkler to buy the land and actually forced Jacob to work as a butler until suddenly a mysterious killer actually shot Lou in the nuts which is urging Jacob and Nick to actually take him inside his secret lair which turned out to be as we speak the hot tub time machine so in order to do that they decided to actually start drinking and and, and sniff out some drugs and all, basically having the best time of their lives just like how they did it in, in the original film you know, hoping maybe they can go travel back in time to in order to stop Lou's killer but then when they already have woken up, they actually found themselves 10 years into the future. So, which Jacob actually suggested that they're in an alternate universe. Yeah, kind of like uh, the alternate universe they used in, in the Back to the Future movies, at this rate, part two. And I know they keep mentioning, oh, just like the Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway... They decided that their best uh, time was just to find um, their old friend Adam Yates, which of course was played by John Cusack, uh, inside his home just trying to find out what's going on and seeing if he's still around. But they have found his coat that's next to the hot tub time machine, and then suddenly they wound up meeting uh, Adam's son, named Adam Yates Stedmeyer, you know, or at this rate, Adam Jr., who happens to be the, the mother of ex-girlfriend Jenny Stedmeyer, who actually became pregnant in 1986 after he, she broke up with Adam. Yeah, because we know that scene where where uh, Jenny actually stabs uh, Adam in, in his eye with a fork. You know, and I know they did that in, into the film. So they basically was explaining the situation since uh, Adam had never had met his father. And we already found out what was going on. So when Lou actually spotted uh, Gary Winkler, he thinks that he actually was the killer. So they actually run and tackle him until... And finding out that Lou did not buy the land that Gary had actually made profit on. So Gary winds up taking them to a nightclub. So they're, where they're basically just having fun and doing all these... Uh, crazy stuff, mostly sex games and everything, while uh, all of a sudden Gary wants to put in a ladybug drug inside Adam Jr.'s neck and that's where it creates a whole drug acid trip towards him um, and then he started making all these phone calls and, and actually punches the guy in the face. Yeah, the phone call he made was actually his fiance, you know, which we saw inside uh, Adam Yates' home since he's going to be planning to get married soon. Yeah, and he started seeing a lot of dirty things. And and to make matters worse, they actually went into a, a game show called Choosy Doozy, which had uh, Christian Slater on the show as your host. Yeah, with Nick Weber being the special guest to actually off to do all the, all the crazy stuff that the audience had liked to choose. But then suddenly, Lou offered uh, Nick to actually have sex um, with a guy. And of course, all the audience decided to vote for him. And, and there you go. They wound up inside a, a virtual reality with Nick 
and Lou together and they're about to go inside a room. I know they actually mentioned the lawnmower man reference into it. A huge cabin and they're about to actually have sex in front of the entire audience but then they said to use a lifeline to actually uh, replace uh, Lou with Adam Jr. So then that way he gets the treatment. And that's how messed up it gets because it, it causes um, his uh, fiance to actually watch the entire thing that he was doing. And if that wasn't bad enough, he wants to take off the ladybug um, patch that he had. And suddenly he started creating a seizure, started throwing up. And he wants to be taken inside a lab where he meets Lou's wife. Works as a nurse and wants up putting all that medicine inside Adam Jr.'s body, which causes his entire penis to grow enlarge. And then she injected a needle inside his penis and started shooting all that white cum, or at this rate, semen. That, w that started squirting all the way through Nick and lose his face. Unbelievable if you ever saw that. But of course, Jacob wants up leaving the group, wants to go back inside Gary's nightclub, and decided to go on all the way on top of, of the roof of a church uh, building, getting ready to commit suicide. But then Lou decided to show up you know, actually um, apologizing to Jacob about the way he acted. Yeah, he accepted the apology until suddenly he wants a falling, and then, and then, when, then a machine that actually prevents him from committing suicide had appeared, and and of course Lou had to jump in. So, but then it cuts directly to um, to the rest of the game inside their their home, their futuristic home, and and they're trying to still. On the lookout to search for the uh, loose killer but then it gets even worse because they decided to plan on going to Adam Jr.'s wedding because already you know you know his fiance is already feeling very miserable and as well as frustrated upset at what Adam Jr. was doing all this time she decided to drink herself up getting really drunk so Lou decided to actually yeah, have sex with with her and while well, drinking, you know, and then Adam Jr. actually spotted, spotted them actually doing it, so that means he's going to actually plan on, on killing Lou. So that's why he started to use uh, the hot tub time machine with those crystals that they had inside to actually, um, to actually go back in time to when... Um, so when Lou was already, you know, making a speech and everything, before you know what what was going to happen, they all actually went back, which we already had saw in the middle of the movie where we saw a blue smart car, which uh, Lou actually started saying something stupid to the car, and and I know the car actually had a mind of its own by actually planning on running over him, but then of course he had to apologize about the way he acted, and then. <laughs> They actually wound up going inside the smart car just by going back in time inside the hot tub time machine to the past, which is the present, to actually stop Adam Jr. To, from shooting uh, Lou. So, of course, you know, he had to apologize to Adam Jr., but so things just turn out as simply as planned until, well, um, yeah, they wound up going back to the hot tub time machine, maybe to, change, to set things right. Until all of a sudden, Lou actually got blasted in the head. And I know there was a unrated cut in this movie where, where we actually spotted uh, John Cusack as Adam Yates actually shooting um, Lou. But in the theatrical version, it's actually Patriot Lou that actually shot him. I know, it's so stupid in so many ways. I guess they were really desperate to actually find uh, an ending this bad. 
get instead of being good like, like they're supposed to be. And then the movie actually ends where they just show basically all these jokes involving how they're actually time traveling to the entire world and how they're being dressed up and they're actually coming up with these funny jokes including you know Jacob actually uh, actually saying that he had sex with Marilyn Manson and all this other stuff yeah this movie is just without a doubt one of the worst sequels I've ever seen and I've seen plenty of bad sequels in comedies and and all these other movies I've seen that that just never work what made the original Hut of Time Machine work was that it had the idea of what was it like when you have friends actually going back in time having to give themselves a second chance in life after they failed the first time I mean they thought maybe this would actually change their lives better because they were already feeling completely miserable so yeah so why did they have to make a sequel to it because you know Hollywood is just running out of stupid ideas that they just want to cash it in to, just so they can make more money in order to provide more sequels than ever before and already this movie had became a, a huge flop at the box office you know it, it made less than 14 million from its original budget yes that's right the original budget for the sequel was 14 million I know the original film was 46 million and they actually made, I believe, 14 million um, when the movie first opened in theaters. Um, so it was sort of like a sleeper hit. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a sleeper hit. It, it did make some money, but not as much. It wasn't a, a huge success as they were as they were hoping for. But it did make even more of its profits uh, on home video. So that's where they brought in its sales, probably enough to actually make it into. The sequel that we have now and yeah th this movie just makes me want to go back and watch the 2010 film even more and in fact I would love to go back and watching the 2010 film now because this movie fucking sucks they, they come up with stupid jokes mostly involving always showing their dicks and balls all the time and yeah and, and they keep talking about it throughout the entire movie and I'm like come on I mean I know this movie had a lot of raunchiness that they went into I mean there's a lot of a lot of boobs uh, from all these uh, girls out there and everything yeah and, and I know that's what the movie was going for and I can accept for the fact that they are using a lot of sex jokes in the film but yeah a lot of sex and raunchy jokes but the way they did this was just stupid and it's ridiculous and they show all these stupid uh, pop culture references that they had and all these other uh, game shows and all this other stupid crap that they put in into the mix they even had a scene where they had the um, the daily show where they actually showed the uh, the black comedian who was actually being chosen to be the host of the show because I know they did a joke on that uh, most recently um, when I found out on online that that John Stewart was actually going to leave the series, and he, and he was going to be replaced by her. Yeah, and and they actually had her in the show anyway. So it's like, yeah, that's 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 a funny joke that they put in. And I'll I'll give you this though, there were a few funny jokes that I did enjoy, but mostly because they show the mirror scene, just like in the original film, where they just show the entire mirror of of their younger selves but this time it's their older selves so so they knew they actually had changed uh, 10 years from the future and you got to see that and I gotta admit maybe there were a few moments with uh, Jacob you know hanging out with with a chick named uh, Sophie and I know they even got the short boobs and, and all that but but still wasn't enough scenes with her you know just like we were going to see more scenes of of Adam's uh, girlfriend, uh, yeah, Adam Yates's girlfriend, that is, yeah. And there was also a scene in the movie where Nick actually started creating. <laughs> oh, you're going to love this, the Rebel Strut. Yeah, that's right, the Rebel Strut. That's trying to be like a parody of 
Gundam Style, and Harlem Shake. What the? I mean, they even had one of the young kids actually tell him to do that, too. And, and you can even tell Nick doesn't want to do it. I don't blame him. I mean, it's just such a lame dance move that they come up with. Unbelievable. The whole plot of this movie is as stupid as it can get. It, it's so horribly bad. I couldn't believe they even come up with it. Yeah, that's right. A killer actually shooting Lou's dick. Yeah, and trying to find his killer. Yeah, that's that's a great way to sell for a movie. And plus, this movie doesn't have any heart to it. That's another problem. The, the first movie had a lot of heart that they went into because they, they knew they were going to give a second chance in life and they were going to fix everything that failed the first time. And it also seems like a, a, uh, a comeback of the 80s because I love the 80s. 80s was my favorite generation as well as the 90s and it worked so well with it. I mean they could have done something a little better as the sequel was going to go for. But no, I, I guess Josh Hill somehow wants up coming up with a, a very bad script, like this one, where they just like to throw in some random stupid jokes and all this other crap that they put into the mix. You know, trying to see how the future really looks and so on and so forth. And actually added, like, scenes involving the smart car and all these other um, gadgets that they use, even the ones where they started using their phones with all this electronics, the holograms and and all these uh, interesting technology that they put into it. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, I just never thought this movie would be so fucking boring. It just doesn't have any heart to it. It's it's just it just lost its spark. That's all it is. I mean, it's just a cash grab, nothing more. It was a huge letdown. Adam Scott is no John Cusack, and he was very unfunny in this film. Um, Rob Caldry, you know, who was actually very funny in the original film, just comes across as a complete jackass. Um, Craig Robinson, you know, he was okay in the film as he was in the original, but. I just wish they gave him better material. That goes the same with Clark Duke. I mean, I wish we could see more of him doing his his moments with um, his girlfriend, uh, soon-to-be girlfriend, Sophie, and maybe some other stuff that he needs to do instead of just being left out. You know, having to commit suicide and all that. It's just, it's just so wrong in so many ways. And Cherry Chase only gets a, a small cameo. Yeah, nothing much. I know he's getting a little older now. He's already, you know, 72, I believe. So, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I could tell he, he sounds more older now than he did. Even did that, uh, that sound reference to um, the movie Caddyshack. I figured. I mean, because he did have a, a small cameo in the original film. When he was just basically a repairman and all that. And he had the father time. So he shows up in some scenes here and there. But pfft, not as much in this movie. And that's why the movie sucks. And you know what? I'd just be happy they're not going to make a sequel to this. And if they do, goodness knows. But let's face it. This movie didn't deserve to be made. It didn't need a sequel at all. I think I'd be better off just watching Hot Tub Time Machine 5,000 times more than this piece of shit. That's for sure. And if you love Hot Tub Time Machine, the original film, which I know I do, avoid this garbage. So anyway, I give Hot Tub Time Machine 2 an awfully bad time, zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Much later. Bye.